Let's check what is new in Affinity Suite version 2.3. All the Affinity applications have now a spiral tool, which looks pretty awesome. It has six styles to choose from, and it looks like a fun tool. So let's switch to photo and see how it works. The tool itself can be found under the vector objects, and when we click and hold on the toolbar icon, the sub-selection will open. The last one is the newly added spiral tool. With the tool selected, I can click on the center position and drag the mouse to make the spiral. Once we have the spiral, we can make changes to the style. Depending on the chosen style, the toolbar will show applicable options for the style. One option we have with all the styles is the number of turns in the spiral. I'm not going to go through all the options and possibilities of the spiral tool. Most of them are self-explanatory and just by experimenting you can easily figure out the possibilities. Affinity did a good job with this tool and is definitely a great add-on. Keep in mind that the spiral tool just generates a curve line and just as with any vector object it can be converted to a curve for further editing using the node tool. The second new feature is the ability to show a pixel grid. When you're doing pixel level work, it is difficult to see without the grid which pixel you will be coloring. The pixel grid can be enabled from the view menu under the grids and axis. Just turn on the checkbox show pixel grid and it will be shown. This makes the life of pixel artists a bit easier. By the way, if you want to paint pixels, Use the pixel paintbrush, in case you're wondering. Also in this version, some important change in the PDF support. All the apps now support exporting PDF files with password, but more importantly, password-enabled PDF files can be imported if you know the password. In version 2.2, Affinity introduced the Move Duplicate dialog by pressing the Enter key when an object is selected. In this version 2.3, they have extended the options with scale, which is quite useful. What I like most is that you can still adjust the object without the dialog closing. Finally, the option of the insertion mode is quite handy as well. Next on the list is a tags panel for Affinity Publisher. As I don't use Publisher, let's move on to the next feature, which is the ability to change the background color of the assets panel. Make sure your Assets panel is open and use the Hamburger button to open up the menu. Now from the background sub-menu, you can change it to your preference. I like the default option, however, I can imagine depending on your assets that it will make more sense to have a light or a transparent background. We have another publisher feature, which as you guessed I'm going to skip. The last one on the list is for Affinity Designer, not a major feature but more of an improvement of life feature. When you use the pen tool in Affinity Designer, there is now the checkbox which allows you to turn off the auto selecting the drawn curve. The default when you draw a curve with the pencil tool is that it will be selected after you finish your drawing. This has a disadvantage that you cannot easily change the properties for the next stroke. I think this will be a good option for artists who use the pen tool frequently. I'm happy Affinity made this an option so you can turn it on and off. Personally, I like it when the curve is auto-selected and this allows me to fine-tune the line if needed. If we check the forum, we can also see that a huge list of bugs have been solved. Two bugs which I really had problems with since version 2 are also gone. Not sure if they were fixed in version 2.3 or 2.2. The first very irritating bug was the Preserve Alpha disappearing from the Live Gaussian Filter dialog after it was applied. Now when the filter dialog is reopened, it shows up again. The second issue was a bug in the blend ranges with mask layers. When you had a layer with a mask, somehow the blend ranges didn't work. A workaround was to group it and then apply the blend range. It looks like that this issue has been resolved too, but I haven't extensively tested it yet, so it might be still there. I'm really glad Affinity keeps pushing updates. Even though they are not groundbreaking, 
it is nice to get these incremental improvements. Thanks again for tuning in and until the next video.